for Daniel Jones. We could go undefeated. We could win the Super Bowl. If Daniel Jones only throws 10 touchdowns, his ass is up out of here. In order for Daniel Jones to stay on this football team, he got to validate that contract. <laughs> You know, before we begin, go to my Fist Vicious channel and subscribe. I need a thousand subscribers on my Fist Vicious channel. Go over there. I just broke down Rick Ross getting smoked in Vancouver. I just talked about Kendrick Lamar, Not Like Us video. I got a Scarface uh, movie series breakdown coming. That's going to be like eight videos. I got some stuff cooking over there. So go subscribe to my Fist Vicious channel. The link is pinned to the comment section. Okay? With that being said, you know, over the summer and on the spring, I've been getting criticized for criticizing Daniel Jones, right? So it's like, yo, Fisk, you switched up on Daniel Jones, and Fisk, how could you betray Daniel Jones like that? And all this other stuff, right? And I find it funny that the only criticism I had of Daniel Jones is he's making $40 million. He is the offense. He got to figure it out. It's on him. He's making $40 million. I've said that a million times since he signed that contract. What's the one thing what is the first thing that Joe Shane said about Daniel Jones the whole episode of Hard Knocks? What's the one thing he said about Daniel Jones? He's making $40 million. Figure it out. The first thing Joe Shane said is, we're paying a quarterback $40 million. Let's protect him. We're paying a, a quarterback $40 million. We're not going to pay a running back $12 million. That don't make sense. Hey. We're paying Daniel Jones $40 million. He's got to be the offense. Every single time they talked about Saquon Barkley, when they was in Joe Shane's office and they said, well, if we let Saquon Barkley walk, who's going to replace his offense? Joe Shane. We're paying a quarterback $40 million. I'm not going to pay a running back 12. When they was in the big conference room and they was like, well, you know, what are we going to do as far as the offense? And he had to explain to John Merrick, our quarterback makes $40 million. Here's the weapons he has. We're just going to improve the offensive line a little bit, but he's got to be the offense. Didn't he tell that to John Mayer? Every single time they spoke about Daniel Jones or they spoke about the offense without Saquon Barkley, Joe Shane said, we're paying a quarterback $40 million. So if the general manager of the football team can't let go of the fact that he paying that quarterback $40 million. Why y'all mad at me for holding him accountable for making $40 million? Don't get mad at me. Get mad at Joe Shane. Joe Shane said the same thing I said. We're paying him $40 million. When you paying a quarterback $40 million, he is the offense. He's got to make bigger plays. Period. So at the end of the day, I felt validated when I watched Hard Knocks because I'm not the only person that assigns expectations to a price tag. When you make $40 million, you better turn sugar into shit. Period. You better figure it out. That offense need to be flying around. So at the end of the day, fellas, Joe Shane made it abundantly clear. The goal was to fix the offensive line around Danny and give Daniel Jones a fair shake one last time. It's obvious. Joe Shane specifically said, bro, not even Patrick Mahomes can survive behind that offensive line. He said that. He knows he has to fix the offensive line. But what he also said in that same episode is, 
We need to figure out if Daniel Jones is the guy going forward or if we need to move on and go in another direction. Remember he said that? He said it. Joe Shane said it out of his mouth. We're going to fix the offensive line and we're going to see once and for all if Daniel Jones is a guy or if we need to move on. Those are Joe Shane's words. Go back and look at the episode. So, Daniel Jones, you're not out the woods yet, bro. You're not out the woods yet. Just because Tommy DeVito ruined our shot at Drake May don't mean you out the woods yet. That don't mean that. Because Joe Shane, he specifically said we got to keep all of our options open. When they first brought up Daniel Jones, Joe Shane said, look, we got to keep our options open. We got to do our due diligence. And previous performance is a predictor of future performance. And he said Daniel Jones has been injured three of the last four years. And we need to be prepared to go into a different direction. Joe Shane does not mince words. Joe Shane told you in the first episode, we're not paying Saquon Barkley. It ain't happening. Daniel Jones, we understand the offensive line sucks. But at the end of the day, you didn't perform good enough. And we need to be prepared to move on from you if we have to. He told you. Joe Shane said it. We're not paying Saquon. Danny, it was a bad situation. We get it. But at the same time, we're prepared to move on from you if we have to. Or if we get the opportunity to. Joe Shane, I love this guy because he don't lie to us. Joe Shane really, he seems like the kind of person that'll just tell you the truth and you got to take it. Joe Shane really seemed like that friend that just say what he feel and you just got to take it. Like, he really don't hold back. Like, Joe Shane's definitely one of those guys that will tell you the truth. And I like that about him. So, Daniel Jones... Ten to fifteen touchdowns ain't gonna cut it, bro. It's not gonna cut it, man. Danny Daniel Jones needs to be prepared to throw twenty five to thirty touchdowns if you want to keep his job. I don't think they bring it Daniel Jones back. Even if we go to the playoffs, if Daniel Jones can only throw ten to fifteen touchdowns with all those fast wide receivers on the field, he's getting replaced. Winning football games and going to the playoffs is not enough for Daniel Jones to keep his job. In order for Daniel Jones to keep his job, he's going to have to validate the contract. This upcoming season is about validating the contract for Daniel Jones. We could go undefeated. We could win the Super Bowl. If Daniel Jones only throws 10 touchdowns, his ass is up out of here. In order for Daniel Jones to stay on this football team, he got to validate that contract. It, 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 there's no other way around it. He got to validate that contract. Because a 10 touchdown a season quarterback ain't worth $40 million. If Daniel Jones wants to continue to make $40 million and make $50 million or $60 million, if Daniel Jones want to level up, he got to level up his play. Because I think it's being abundantly clear when you listen to how they talk in the meetings, when they talk about explosive plays and creating offense and things of that nature, they want to score some points. They want to score some points. Saquon Barkley is not here anymore. So there's no more excuses for Daniel Jones to only have 10 touchdowns. You can't say, oh, well, the Giants are a running team, the, the Giants are offensive based around Saquon Barkley, that's why Daniel Jones' production isn't good. Daniel Jones' production isn't good because Jason Garvin and Joe Judge suck. Those excuses are out the window. It's Daniel Jones or bust. There is no more Saquon Barkley. Now you got Malik Neighbors out there. Now you got another year of Jalen Hyatt. You got another year of Wondell Robinson. If Daniel Jones ain't out there performing and putting up numbers in an offense that's going to throw the ball 80% of the damn time, then he's a failure and he'll be replaced. It doesn't matter if we win games. It doesn't matter. Winning games is not going to determine whether Daniel Jones is a quarterback in 2025. Daniel Jones' production 
is going to determine if Daniel Jones is a quarterback of the Giants in 2025. Period. With that being said, that's it, that's all. Hit that like button, hit that sub button, and drop the FUs in the comments if you rock with me. And stay vicious. Dismissed. <laughs>